Session three on our series of performance information entitled the ABCs of EPDs uh, deals with the maternal traits. Uh, again, I'm Patrick Wall, ISU Beef Program Specialist uh, housed in Southeast Iowa, and uh, one of my major areas of interest would be the performance traits and how to, to properly use them uh, in a selection program. So we'll break down the maternal traits one by one. And the traits included, uh, it might sound ironic, but we'll start with scrotal circumference, docility, F for pregnancy and, and measures of fertility, maternal cavities, milk or total maternal, and then a few others that can be used as indicators. So scrotal circumference, it's a, a very low heritability, high profitability trait. It is expressed in centimeters, obviously in bulls only, but it's one of the best tools that we have available to assess female puberty and fertility. Um, one of the things that is uh, a struggle of scrotal circumference is we get a reduced data set. Any bulls that have a small scrotal circumference at, uh, at weaning or yearling are usually castrated uh, and removed from the data set and not measured, uh, which also helps us because we take them small scrotum bulls out of the population and hopefully help our fertility on the female side. It is a good tool when you're selecting bulls for heifer retention. And then don't forget about heterosis advantages of the F1. Uh, we use that trait to, to help us get to fertility, but uh, F1 females are far more fertile than a purebred uh, individual regardless of, of scrotal circumference. So what's the value of docility? We have two pictures here, obviously at opposite ends of the spectrum. and. Uh, one person certainly enjoying the cattle business much more than the other at the current time of the photo. As producers age, this trait seems to gain importance uh, for obvious reasons. It is expressed as a percentage difference in cattle temperament of the progeny of a bull. Uh, so it's based on docility score, one being calm and six being uh, very aggressive or dangerous. So higher EPD values are better disposition cattle or a better percentage uh, of progeny. Uh, it's important to understand that breeds with issues are more likely to have them. Uh, variation is required for selection, so there has to be an issue with docility in order to develop an EPD. Uh, if, a, if a breed is known for their calm demeanor, chances are you're not going to see do docility show up in their, trait of, in their uh, performance trait profile. Heifer pregnancy and fertility. Uh, very few breeds offer these traits because they're very difficult to measure and difficult to measure accurately. Herd size needs to be large for impact and it is reported as a success rate, uh, particularly in the Angus breed, or a percentage of pregnant heifers in a breeding season. So higher numbers equal more are pregnant. Uh, the problem with measures of pregnancy and fertility is breeders simply don't report errors. Uh, when a heifer does not conceive due to AI, a lot of those errors just simply do not get recorded uh, at the breed association level. Maternal calving ease. It was talked earlier in session one. We'll touch on it again here. It's expressed as a percentage of unassisted births from a bull's daughters. Uh, so it is a good indicator of pelvic area, or it's an indicator of the athletic ability of a cow uh, to push a calf out on her own. So basically it's taking this bull and equating it to this picture on the right, maternal calving ease is the measure of that sire uh, to have daughters that do that on their own. So milk, uh, it is only influenced by weaning weight. Uh, so it's the genetically unexplainable portion of weaning weight. Uh, that heifer or cow has a, an individual performance, thus we're expecting a certain amount of performance out of that calf uh, if that calf exceeds that trait, then that is attributed to milk. If she uh, underperforms and that calf comes in lighter than the genetics expect, uh, that is called detrimental milk, so she is uh, discounted on the milk trait. It's expressed in pounds of calf at weaning, and uh, it's important to understand that it has very little to do with the white stuff that comes out of the udder. Uh, it's more on the performance side. Uh, it has probably more to do with the quality of the milk uh, and her ability to perform and, and mother that calf than maybe does with the white stuff or, or the size of the other. <clears throat> it should be managed for environment and not maximized. Uh, and that's matching your feed and your forage resources uh, to, to the abilities of that animal to milk uh, and still get rebred for the following year. 
Uh, we here in Iowa, some of us fight the fescue belt. Um, the milk requirements in that part of the state uh, are quite different from that of, of areas of much harder and, and better grass. So here's a good uh, depiction of milk versus environment. Uh, the milk required for the lower left would be far less uh, than what we could get out of the, up the upper right. Uh, we can really chase milk in an environment that's, that's like the upper right, uh, less any fescue that might be in that pasture, of course. Uh, the lower left would be a, a much harsher region uh, where low, low milk is almost required in order to get those females rebred. Some other traits uh, that might indicate maternal ability are mature weight and cow size, not necessarily their ability, but uh, the, the ability for them to be profitable in your, in your operation. It would vary among breeds and how it's portrayed, but it can be accomplished with uh, other EPDs or uh, measures of you know, dollar indexes, uh, things of that nature. Stayability is a good trait, uh, and it's essentially the ability to, of a cow uh, to stay in the, herd, in the herd past age six, uh, calving every year since age two. Uh, Gelvian Simmental uh, used this trait. Uh, it has caught uh, some flack just based on the fact that those, that stayability trait moves uh, with the expansion or the retraction of the cow herd. Um, when the cow herd is in expansion, stayabilities uh, become a bit easier to achieve. And uh, if a cow conceives and, and calves at age two and then calves again at age three, it's pretty likely she will calve again at four, five, and six. So in summary, uh, the reproductive traits that, uh, that are so important to our profitability are very usually low heritability. Uh, so management is extremely important in keeping them going in the right direction. Uh, we need to manage milk, not maximize it, and then also manage mature size and your cow costs, uh, which actually may require some deselection for growth traits. Uh, more EPDs or tools be coming in this uh, sector in the future. I think genomics can play a huge role in maternal ability. Uh, on those traits that are really hard to measure, that's where genomics uh, can help producers of all sizes. So with that, uh, Hopefully this has given you a good insight of what pieces of information on paper can help your cows get better.